Abba Ruha, Father, we thank you for this week, Father. We thank you that it doesn't matter how we perceive our week, Father. It doesn't matter how or what we've planned, Father. Thank you that your word teaches us that your counsel shall stand in. Because there's a truth that was spoken over all our lives. There's a purpose that was spoken into our lives from the very beginning of Thank you that we can stand in purpose, that we can walk and stand in your will, your love and your grace and your mercy for us in our lives. We praise you that you, you are part of our lives. Abba, thank you for today. Thank you that we can enter into your rest, that we can enter into this fellowship knowing that you are with us. Because you teach us in your word with two or three Gather in your name, Father. There you are in presence. Your Holy Spirit, your set up our spirit is part of this gathering today. Thank you, Father, that you're the one guiding us, leading us, and equipping us. Abba, I ask that you'll that you'll guide my speech, Father. That every word that I shall speak, or Natalia speak, or Kuba speak, it doesn't matter who speaks, Father, who you've raised up to give a word today, who you've raised up to witness today, Father, who you've raised up to teach us today, Father. It's not about the, the man, it's about you, Abba. And I ask you that you will guide our speeches, you'll guide the words, Father, that you will put your work on our tongues, that we will spread your living word, Abba, Father. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your heart. We thank you in your son, Yahushua's mighty, mighty name. Amen. Again, guys, I'm just going to close my video. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Again, thank you for joining us today. Um, we, 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 we talked last week about how Father Yah protects us and, and how He provides for us under His covenant. So, and we, and we saw and we read and we studied last week that Father does not pay for my DSTV. He's not going to give me a double cap if I don't need it. So many times I meet people that see Abba as this provider for everything they want or need in their lives. Because we are so many times taught that he gives in his abundance. But what we are not being taught by our church leaders or spiritual leaders is that Abba gives out of the abundance of his heart. What he knows, because he knows what is good for me. He knows what I need. Abba gives out of the abundance of his grace and his mercy and his love for me. And we saw every week or we see every week that the Torah portions just flow from the one week to the other week. And it's almost like we are continuing with last week's teaching of how the Israelites had to move when the cloud above them and above the tabernacle start to move. They could have stayed uh, in, in, in the area they were camping if they really wanted to. If they did not want it to move, they could have stayed there. But then the hand of the father would have moved. So they would have left the covering of the farm. So in this week's Torah portions, we read in Numbers 13, 1 about the 12 spies that were sent out. In Numbers 13, 25, we read about the report from these spies that came back and gave a report on what they saw. In Numbers 14, 1, about how the Israelites complained in the wilderness. In Numbers 14, 13, how Moses interceded for this redeemed nation, for the Israelites. And in Numbers 15, 1, we read about the sacrifices. In Numbers 15, 15 sorry, 32, the disobedience of the Shabbat. And in Numbers 15, 37, the wearing of the tzitzes. And in this week, we see the Israelites get to a certain point where they were about to cross into the promised land. And they had to go into this, into this promises. But something happened. Something went wrong and they were turned around. So, so while they were standing there by the border of this promised land that the Father gave to them, they were told, Father told Moses to turn around. And I want to ask you, my brother and sister, how was your week this, this week? How was your walk this week with the Father? 
Did he show you something new? Did Abba say something new? Maybe something you had to do. Maybe, uh, maybe even something you, you had to believe in him for. Something that you had to trust him. So it doesn't matter what you and I feel or think. It doesn't matter what we think will happen. Abba asked you and me to trust him. And this week we will see how we are all given options in life. And within these options, I need to decide whether I will allow myself to be manipulated and to follow the world's view or the popular view, or will I take the evidence of what is given to me or the evidence that's laid down before me and go to the Father, go to Abba Yah and say, Daddy, is this your opinion, Father? Is this your promise? Is this your will for me and my family? So who will we listen to? Will I also go where the majority is going? Do what the majority is doing? Because surely not all of them can be wrong. Or will I ask our Father? We read in Galatians 1 verse 10, For do I now persuade men or Elohim? Or do I seek to please men? For it shall be pleased. For if I still please men, I should not be a servant of Messiah. So to be a servant is to go where your master sent you. To be a servant is to do what your master tells you to do. Is to be obedient to his word, to his will and purpose. So whom am, am I listening to? Do I really put man's opinion and man's purpose above that of Allah? Because I would rather follow man. I would rather want to see where I go or will I follow the father? You see, when I start to follow man, then I no longer walk in faith. I want to say it again. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I say, when, when I start to follow man's opinion, then I no longer walk in faith. Last week, we saw the Israelites started moving and they moved to a new destination, to a new season in their walk with Abba Yah. And on this walk, there was skepticism. I'm sure there was skepticism. There, there would have been fear for the unknown and definitely there was expectations. And so many times we go through our daily lives and we have fear for the unknown and we have expectations. There's something we want or we expect or we feel things to happen in a specific way. What was our expectations of this week that we just had? Did we fear the unknown? That we, that, that, that we had any fear for, for, for the week? You see, the Israelites were told they're going to this place of milk and honey. This wide open land where they will be free and they had expectations to see certain things or to receive certain things. When they entered into this promised land, you see, they had expectations but was the expectations in line with the promise given to them by the father did they take the time to go to Abba Yah to see if their expectations is correct so what is expectations it is the strong belief for something to happen or for something to happen in a specific way in other words it is the belief to receive or things to happen in a way we think it should happen. And this is where fear sets in. Because expectations is our ideas. It is the picture I painted for myself. Fear is believing a lie. So now the question is, who's lying to me? Was it Abba? Because the promise he gave me was not in line with my expectations. Or is it a lie I believe myself that I made up for myself because of my own feelings, my own intellect or my, or my own Indian expectations? Am I believing what other people are telling me or what my church leaders or elders are telling me? Or have I searched out the matter by the Father? Let's say that you see this vacancy in a newspaper for a position in a company. And you know you can do that job. So you send your CV and you are asked to come in for this interview. You had a good interview. In fact, you had a great interview. When you walked out of there, you were happy. But while you're in this interview, this HR person painted a picture for you about the company. How old it is, how stable it is, how great it is to work there. 
and also what your job would be. And then most importantly, the promise of a certain salary. You see, the HR person did not tell you about the people in the company. He or she did not tell you the kind of people you'll be working along with. So the question is, did you do research on that company before you went for the interview? Did you find out what people works in that company and what, what sort of environment it is to work in for that company? So instead of just following the promise of the paycheck, did you investigate? So what is the reality we expected out of this week? What is the reality we expect for our walk with our father? If, if, if daddy Abaya has all these promises for me, do we know what he truly speaks over us? Or do we just think we can receive, we, we, we can name it and claim it and receive whatever we think the Father has for us? Like I've just said, expectation is that feeling or believing for something to happen or something you expect to get, either good or bad. And what is our attitude towards that? If I don't get what I expected, will I take offense? Will we get angry? What emotions will I show towards, I don't know, my family or my colleagues or the people around me? You see, what if I came to my son, Juan, who works for me, by the way, and I told him that I'm going to give him this gift next week? What if I tell him, son, I've ordered you something from Voltex Electrical, and I know you can use it to, to, to enhance your work? You see, but Juan never come to me and say, Daddy, what do you have for me? So what if we then go into the next week and I hand him this new multi-tester? But what if what he thought was something maybe much bigger? Or his ideas of the gift I would have given him was something completely else? Would, would he then be disappointed? Of course he would. You see, because what he expected or what he thought he's getting is completely different to what then I promised him. You see, the problem is, Ron never came to me and said, Daddy, what do you have for me? He didn't come to say me, Daddy, what is this gift? What gift or what does it look like? Or Daddy, what is the purpose of this gift? So do we know the promises of the Father? And do we trust him completely that, that he knows best for me? So was Ron's expectations in line with what I promised him? Or maybe we should ask, was his attitude or his expectation in agreement with what I told him? You see, because faith is in an agreement. If, if I stand in a firm belief towards the Father, then I stand in agreement with his will and purpose for me. So I'm not talking today about our attitudes in life. I'm talking about the way I'm handling myself towards the will and the purpose of the Father. Let me maybe put it this way. In our family lives, did you and me sow good seed to expect the fruit of a great week with our family? Did you and I sow good seed in our businesses or working environments to expect a good harvest during this week? And this is our walk with Abba Father. We sow into the kingdom of Abba Yah. I'm not talking about tithing here or my finances. I'm not talking about, or oh, this is not a prosperity teaching. I'm talking, what do I sow into the kingdom of Abba? So what is the faith I sow towards that kingdom? The trust and obedience I sow towards my father. The willingness to obey the Messiah because he called me to follow him. Do, do I blindly sow into that? Do I know where I'm going because I've set the course for myself? Or am I following Abba Yah? You see, Abraham was called to get up and go. He had to trust the Father without knowing where he's going. The Israelites had to go where Abba Yah sent them, and they knew the land they were giving to, or, or, or they, were, they were gave, because they've even sent 12 spies into that land. So how did you and I react this week with whatever happened in our lives? Did we blindly go into this week knowing that Abba is covering me? His hand is over me. So no matter what, I know according to his word, it says all will work out for the good because I love him and I know Abba Yah loves me. 
you see, because we're all going to face obstacles. That I go into this week thinking that the enemy is waiting for me by, the, by my front door. And I says, as soon as I leave my home, then the battle starts. And then I, I, this will just be a day in which I'm defeated. The question is not if we face any obstacles this week or if something does go wrong or according to our plans or our expectations or our purposes, what will we do? Now, the question is when something goes wrong, when we stay into the face of the enemy, what will we do? Will, will we turn to the Father and ask him? So let's read Numbers 13 verses 1 to 3. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the children of Israel. And send one man from each tribe of their fathers, everyone a leader among them. And by the mouth of Yahuwah, Moshe sent, uh, sent, them, sent them from the wilderness to Paran, all of them who were heads of the children of Israel. So just in this verse, we read that Abba, spoke to Moses and said to him, send leaders from the 12 tribes to go into this land. He's about to give them, to explore. But when we read Deuteronomy 1.22, then we see something else. When we read Deuteronomy 1.22, it says, and this is Moses speaking to the people, the congregation or the elders, and he says to them, and all of you came near to me and said, let us, and I want you to listen here, and said, come near to me and said, let us send men before us and let them search out the land for us and bring back word to us on the way by which we should go and of the cities into which we would come. You see now, so I'm a bit confused reading Numbers 13 verses 1 to 3 in Deuteronomy 1 22. We see something completely different. So who did send the men? Was it Abba? Or was it the leaders of Israel? And the whose authority did the spies go out? And I want us to understand this. And the whose authority did the spies go out? Because Abba did not choose the 12 spies. These men did. Abba knows what is in Canaan. He knows the goodness of the land. He knows the evil that might be laying ahead. So to send out spies was not to gather info for Abba. It is to gather info for the people because they wanted to know. And is this not what happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Chava ate of the tree of knowledge because they also wanted to know. How many times do we gather info because we are stuck in fear? Instead of just blindly trusting the Father. So did the Israelites send spies so that they could see the goodness of the land? To go and see what Abba had planned for them? Or did they send the spies to explore the enemy? The leaders of Israel talks about the way by which we should go up and of the cities into which we would go. It's almost in, in, in and again, in every Torah portion, we read how Abba our father tells Moses or he commands Moses what to do. Abba Yah tells Moses what to say. Abba tells Moses where to go. But when we read Deuteronomy, then we see the leaders say us, and they talk about we, and they talk about us the whole, the whole time. It's, it's like they conveniently forget that this promise is a promise from the Father. It's like they conveniently forget that Father is leading them into this promise. Now. So the spies were to bring back information on the people living in the land. How big is the land? Is the people strong or are they weak? Are they a lot of people or not? Is the city's walled or fortified? And was the land good or is the land bad? So the spies reported that the land was rich, flying with milk and honey. But the people lived there, were powerful, and the cities were large and fortified. And I want you to understand this, my brother and sister. The spies did not lie. The report they gave to Moses and the elders were the truth. Because that was the physical circumstances. They saw that it's like you and me in our lives. We, 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 we are in this world and we've got a, a life that we're living. We, we've got physical circumstances surrounding us. And we've got stuff that we need to do and have to do. And it's things that occupies us. So 
The spies never lied. But the elders listened to a lie. And what was that lie? You see, Abba never said to explore the ways of the land they were entering into. Abba never said explore to see how you can conquer them or get victory over them. Abba did not say go and explore the enemy and their strongholds because Abba is almighty. He sees everything. He knows everything. In fact, the word makes it clear. He has given the enemy into the hands of the Israelites already. Just like he did so many times with all the other wars that they had. And so many times, you and I face physical stuff in our lives. And instead of believing sometimes, believing the Father, instead of believing His truth, we believe a lie. You see, because fear is a liar. And it's not Abba Yah who forgot about the victories that He gave the Israelites. It is us. Because we see the ways and the strongholds and we get fearful. We turn to ourselves and say, this is impossible. We simply forget that Allah is the victorious one. He's the mighty warrior. And that, my brother and sister, is where fear starts. We want to conquer out of ourselves. We see the ways and the cities and we get fearful. Because we move in our own abilities. We move in our intellect. And we forget that father drowned Pharaoh and the Egyptians in the sea. So in, in, in understanding this, we see that under whose instructions are we moving? Are we moving under the guidance and counsel of Abba Yah or under the instructions and manipulation of men? Abba said, I'm giving this land to Israel. He did not say send spies and see if it's possible. Father did not say, go and see if you can get victory over your enemies. Abba did not say to Moses, send spies and check where, what or where is the weakest link. Or send spies to see if you and the 70 leaders or the elders can come up with a much better plan than what my plan is and see if you can win this land for yourselves. You see, who are we believing, my brother and sister? Who are we trusting for victory in our lives? So this promise is given by the Father for you and me, for our callings, for our purposes, for what we are set to do on, in this world. Who are we trusting for? So we read the spies with stand up. What is a spy? The work of a spy is to gather information, to give a report of what is going on. And in this case, like we said, the spies in this case reported on what they've seen. They did not lie. The report was about the goodness of the land. In fact, they brought back evidence of the goodness of the land. And then there was a but. And you see, that's the lie of the enemies with the but. But the enemies are big. The enemies are so much. The enemies are so strong. They have walled cities. They have these big walled cities. It starts with a but, my brother and sister. That's where the lie starts. So to spy out, it means to search out, to explore. And, and then it also says to go about as a trader, as a merchant. You see, it's not just to see the, the, the bad of the land, but the good as well. And that is our mindset. You see, the father's mindset is a mindset of go and see the goodness of the land. Go as a merchant. Go and see the crops of the land. Go and see the water supplies of the land. But to go with, a, with the mindset of the enemy is that but. Is to go and see what the enemy does. Go and see how big is your enemy, Francois. Go and see if you think you can conquer your enemy. So to spy is to gather intelligence. And what do we do with that intelligence? What do you and I do with that information that we receive? Do we get fearful? Do we pray about it? Do we allow information to manipulate us? Because another question, think about this. What was the intention of the one who gave me that information? So these spies, and we know they were 12, two gave a good report, 10 gave a bad report. So the 10 that gave this bad report 
were they fearful already when they went into the land? So they had a mindset of just looking for the bad of the land. What was their intentions? Why did they come back with a bad report? You see, these people that give this bad report to you and me, they tell us a lie. They give us bad information because it's a mindset. It's their mindset. So this lie becomes an authority. If I believe that lie, I give authority to that lie. Israel, Israel was ready to move into Canaan. They were standing on the border, but maybe we should ask, were they mentally ready to conquer Kenya? Did they believe the land is theirs? Were they in agreement with the promise of the Father, the promise that he gave? them? And that is with you and me in daily in our lives, my brother and sister. Every morning when we wake up, do we believe that this day is a day that Abba Yahuwah has made? This is a gift from the Most High. This is a day He gave me to glorify Him, to worship Him, for me to walk in purpose and to do His will. Do I believe that? Do I stand in agreement with the Father with this promise He's given me for this day? Deuteronomy 1.21 says, See, Yahuwah, your Allah, has set the land before you. Go up and possess it. As Yahuwah Allah of your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear, do not be discouraged. So Abba told Moses that Israel will inherit this land. Moses knew the promise, uh, the promise that the sons of Israel will go into the land and conquer this land. So Moses was in agreement with the father. But the sons of Israel was not in agreement. They did not see this as a possibility. They only saw and they felt the fear in themselves. The expectations they maybe had was different than what this agreement in the Father is. So for us to enter into the promises of the Father, we must walk in faith. And faith is to be in agreement with the heart and the will of the Father. Our actions, the words we speak, must be in line with the agreement of faith. We have towards, like I said, the will and purpose of Abba Yah. We must act towards yeast. Useful and believe them. The choice is ours to believe. What we want to believe. The way we want to go. Our choices have consequences. Israel chose to be fearful and were turned around. What was our mindset when we started this week? Did we know that this week, like I said, was given to us by Abba Yah? Is that the way we start every day? Of every week, knowing it was given, it's a gift from the Most High King. How did we handle this week, or how did we handle circumstances that came our way? Did we feel threatened? Were we fearful, or were we at rest? Because we know the hand of Abba Yah is over us. Did I enter this week, or every day, did I enter it to see the enemy laying at my front door? That maybe he's waiting to devour me? Or did I enter this week knowing that Abba is with me? Not to have a defeated mindset, not to walk around with my head bowed down the whole day of every day of this week, but, but to lift up my head, to keep my eyes on the King, to know that he is walking in front of me and he is guiding me where I should go. So in this land of milk and honey, is it a fairy tale land for me and you? Is it a never, never land? Or is it a place of destination for, me, for you and me? A place of promises and abundance? Do we realize that the promised land, this land of milk and honey, was given to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob first? This land the Israelites were heading to was occupied by their forefathers long before the Israelites even got there. This promise of the Father never changes, my brother and sister. We change. We move the goalposts. We choose, like I said last week, with the this, this story between Balaam and Balak, we choose to move under uh, or out uh, under the hand of Abba Yah. We choose to move out from under his cover to follow our own will and purpose. We read in Exodus 33, 1, 2, 3, and Yahuwah said to Moshe, come, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of this land of Mitzrayim, 
to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob, saying, to your seed I give it. And I shall send my messenger before you, and I shall drive out the Canaanites, and the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, the Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. So this is a promise spoken by Abba many years ago, and it still stood. This promise was given to Abraham in Genesis 15, 18 to 20. The same promise given to Isaac in Genesis 26, 3 to 5. The same promise given to Jacob, Genesis 28, 13 to 50. The same promise given to Moses, Exodus 23, 27 to 31. And then the same promise given to Joshua, Joshua 1, 2 to 4. It's the same promise. The same promise given or given over and over to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the way to Joshua. Abba does not change. Malachi 3, 16, Hebrews, uh, uh, the book of Hebrews says, Father does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. His promises for you and me does not change, my brother and sister. We the one who change. Because we want to follow our own intellect. We want to follow our own ideas. And we listen to the lies of the enemies. John 15, 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he might give you. You see, we, we are led to a promised land. We are led in our ministries to whatever the Father has raised you and me up to be, whatever the promises we have, Father promised of us, and he wants us to bear fruit in that promise. So it doesn't matter what the Father has promised over you, my brother and sister. Father is expecting you and me to bear fruit in that promise. He wants us to go into that promise, to follow him, to stand on his word, and to know that we will bear fruit in that promise. Because we are part of his kingdom. Ephesians 1 verses 4. Even as he chose us before the foundation of the world, that we should be set apart and blameless before him in love, having previously ordained us to adoption as sons through Yahushua Messiah to himself, according to the good pleasures of his desire, to the praise of the esteem of his flavor, with which he favored us in, in the beloved. So we are given this promise to enter into the promised land. This promised land is his kingdom. And like I've said in, in, in previous teachings is that this kingdom is his kingdom and we must see this wide open spaces where you and I get to move within this kingdom and, and we've got the protection and the provision of the king over us. It's this cloud that was hanging over the tabernacle. We've got that same covering over you and me when we adopted into this kingdom and we move within this kingdom within obedience. We read in Proverbs 19, 21. And so many times we've heard this verse. And I ask you today to listen what the Father is teaching us through this verse. To us. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the counsel of Yahuwah that stands. What is a plan, my brother and sister? First thing we need to realize, a plan is a fleshly purpose. It's a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. It's an attention or decision about what is going to do. So it's something I decide. It's to make an arrangement in advance. It's to design or make a plan for something. And this is my, for me so beautiful to understand. It's to design a plan. What is designing? Designing is creating something for my purpose. It's creating something to fit my will. It's creating something that I will like because that's the way I want it. And then this verse says man's heart. And this man's heart is man's desires. It's man's opinions and will. It's man's intellect and feelings. So just in this first words where it says many are the plans in a man's heart, I was saying, so many plans on purposes is driven by our feelings, our intellect, our understanding of things. You see, we're driven by our own thoughts, our own intellect, and what we want. 
And then the verse goes on, it says counsel. And this is Abba's purpose, his will, his advice for me and you, his guidance under his set the parts for. And this we can read in Isaiah 14, 24 and Isaiah 46, 11. And the last part of the verse, it says, my counsel shall stand. Some translation says will prevail. It means to arise, to stand up or to stand firm. So Abba says his counsel does not stand. Is that what we've said previously? Father does not change. His will and his purposes from Abraham all the way through to you and me today is exactly the same. Nothing changed. But are we walking in that? Are we standing in that promises, in that will and purpose of the Father? We read in James 4, verse 13 to 14, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, let us go to such and such a city, spend a year there and trade and make a profit. When you do not know of tomorrow, for what is your life? For it's a vapor that appears for a little and then it disappears. So James is saying here, my brother and sister, what purpose are you following? Whose will are you following? Are you standing in the will of the Father? Because that is for eternity. But if you stand in your own will, in your own purpose, surely that will perish. Abba wants to teach us in, the, in this verse to slow down and to listen before we act. We need to know not to follow our own feelings and thoughts, but to inquire of him first. Because when we think about it, Abba says that we have a choice. I can follow my own desires. I can follow my own purpose and dreams, but I will miss the mark. And the mark is the dream that he has for me. The purpose and the calling he has for me. His dream for me is much bigger than what I can dream or desire. Isaiah 46.10 says, declaring the end from the beginning and from the old that was or which has not yet been done, saying, my counsel does stand, and all my delight I do. So what is a choice? Have you ever thought about that? The Oxford Dictionary defined the process or cho choosing as an act of choosing between two or more possibilities. The right or ability to choose. A range of poss possibilities from which one or more may be chosen. And so many times in our lives, we make decisions based on certain choices or preferences or expectations. And we do not always think about the consequences or the impact that which we have chosen might have in the future for me or my family. Most of the time, my decisions will either have a positive or negative reaction. We are taught in the word of Abba Yah that we choose or we react according to the circumstances in our lives, whether it be good or bad. And I can run away, but sooner or later I need to face the responsibilities. So we choose to have a good or bad attitude. And yes, obedience is a choice. Some choices we make daily. It can be a short-term, a medium, or even a long-term choice that we make and decisions we make. My current life is a result of the choices I might have made five years, ten years, five days ago. And I need to live with these consequences. So any choice or decision I make will have a result. And whatever the outcome of my choices, I must live with. Only the Father's word can give me truth. And if I stand in that and make my choices according to his truth, then I'm free indeed because his truth sets me free and nothing will bind me. And we said earlier, fear binds us or a lie binds us. And this we must understand. It is something else's or someone else's opinion. It is someone else's purpose for me. It's man's desires or man's ideas for me that binds me. If I'm called by father to be, for example, if I'm called to be a counselor and other people tell me, Francois, you have no qualifications, you cannot counsel anyone. And then if I believe that, then I'm bound by a lie because I believe their word instead of believing the word of the father. 
Because the word of the Father teaches me that when I do not know what to say, He set apart Spirit will give me the words to say. When I do not know where to go, His Ruach, His set apart Spirit will guide me. You see, that sets me free. The word of the Father is truth, and His truth sets me free. So as a child of the King, I just need to be obedient. Ask him first and then go and do what he tells me to do. Psalm 16 verse 8 says, I've set a lure always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. So we started off by saying to choose is an action I'm making between two or more possibilities. Why is to choose between uh, more possibilities and action? Firstly, to choose is to make a decision. It's an action I think I'm thinking in my mind. To choose is to decide a direction I'm going. To choose is to make up my mind and to follow through with that. Is it not always, sorry, it's not always easy to choose or to make a decision between a few alternatives. But what if you and I in our daily lives are given away? What if we listen to the set-apart spirit of the Father? What if we just allow him, when we wake up every morning, just to say, Abba, Father, I'm giving you this day daily. Because you know the future, Abba. You know what's laying ahead for me. And I will go where you send me. I will do what you tell me to do. Deuteronomy 39 verse 13 says, I call on heaven and earth as witness this day against you. That I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So choices are decisions that actively impact or direct your life and my life, my brother and sister. With every choice, we create our future and impact others. My decisions need to be guided by one truth. The question I need to ask is, whom am I listening to? There's only two options or choices in my life, good or evil. The choice I make will direct my path. Do I listen to myself? Do I listen to the lie? Or do I listen to the Father? Abba Yah gives me the freedom to choose. The freedom to make a decision with or without. Me. The freedom to choose to have a positive or negative impact. When I choose to submit to Him, to follow Him, He gives me life, a reason to wake up every morning. Abba Father, Gives me the choice to exercise my will or his will. Abba gives us his strength and his spirit to overcome Satan. Allah is a gentleman. My brother and sister, we must understand this. He will not force himself on us. If I tell my son, for example, not to ride his bicycle in the street because he might get hit by a car. Should he choose to go out and leave the security of, of our home or our yard or the environment I've created for him to be safe in, and he gets hit by a car, then it's his fault. He chose not to obey me. He chose to ignore my instructions, even though my son chose to ignore my rules and instructions. I still love him. But now the trust might be broken. But he need to face the consequences of his decisions. I, I will still take him to the hospital. I'll still pay for the bills. But he needs to take that. He, he's going to walk around with those cars. You see, I'll still pick him up. He can still come and lie on my chest. Like I said, I will still love him. But he needs to face what he has decided. And this is what happened to the Israelites. Because they were disobedient, Abba gave them the land and said to enter into it, to be victorious over the enemies. But they chose to listen to the enemy. So they were told to turn around. But Abba still covered them. He still provided for them. We read in Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that shadow is the shadow of the Father covering us. And in obedience, we walk in that and we stay in that. So may the Father guide us. In this week. May we walk in his truth. And in the purpose he has for all of us. So let's pray. 
Abba, our Father, we thank you and we worship you. Abba, we, we thank you that there's only one truth. And it's your truth. We thank you, Father, that you are life. And you give us life, Abba. We thank you that it doesn't matter where we go, Abba. It doesn't matter where you send us in our lives, that you will always be with us. And it's my prayer, Daddy, that this week that we're about to enter into, that you will send your messengers before us, Father, that you will guide us and protect us in this week, Father. May we stand in your will, Father. May we enter into the promised land you have for us. Daddy, it doesn't matter what promise you have for us. May we walk in that faith, knowing that you are the one guiding us and equipping us, Father. May we listen to your set-apart spirit. May we be ready and willing, Father, to obey your will and purpose. Abba, I, I pray for everyone, all your children, for the bride, Father, and ask that your bride will stand up this week. That she will search you out, Father. That she will stand in the promise you have for her that you are coming to fetch her. That you will be ready and obedient and waiting for you. That her lamp will be full of oil. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. We praise you and we honor you and we Pray all of this in your son, Yahushua's mighty name. Amen. Receive this blessing, my brother and sister. Ya verechecha, Yahua, Vishmerecha. Ya e, Yahua, Panavelecha, Vichunecha. Yesa, Yahua, Panavelecha, Via Shem, Lecha, Shalom. May Yahua bless you and keep you. May Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom.